might have life, eternal life, yeah. through his name. Yes, None of us All right. hmm. have gone to heaven and come back. However, we believe there's a heaven because these things are written. Yeah, yeah. No one has gone to hell and come back and shared with us the suffering of hell, but we believe it because Isaiah said, hell has enlarged herself. Well, yeah. Our problem is we won't believe the things that are written. That's the issue. Just believe what you can read. These things are written All right. that you might believe. None of us have seen Jesus, but everybody get up and preach Jesus because we can read right. about Jesus. Right. Now, this subject's not hard. Right. Yeah, the, the problem sometimes is with the heart, the soul of man. Yeah, 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 yeah. the soul of man. So, uh, in the next few moments, let's go with the text that I've been given. Uh, and uh, I'll stay with the text that I'm given in Romans chapter 4. On, Romans 4. Mm -hmm. right. uh, Paul, uh, being the one that had, had given the letter. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in verse 1, What shall we say then uh, that Abraham, our father, as pertaineth to the flesh, has found? Mm -hmm. Paul asked the question. For if Abraham, he said, was justified by works, he has well to glory, but not before God. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Then he said, for what said the scripture? That's it. Abraham, we'll find this in James, Abraham believed God, on, yeah. and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's it. Then he tells us in verse number four, key text, now to him, that work it uh -huh. is the reward, not reckon of grace, but of debt. Yes, yes. What J, uh, uh, Paul wrote to the uh, Romans, I understand the fact that when I work, yeah. I expect the reward. Yeah. He said, this is not of grace, but of debt. You owe me this. Yeah. Yeah. When I go to work, I expect to be paid. Yeah. But what we have to understand, God can never be indebted to man. Man is indebted to God. Yeah, yeah. We can never earn salvation. Yeah. It is the grace of God. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. And Paul said, but to him that worketh not, mm -hmm. not works of, now that, the Paul was talking about works of merit. Yeah. He said, but him that worketh not, not works of merit, he said, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith yeah, yeah, yeah. is counted for righteousness. Now, we said that this lecture is according to the scripture, so let's stay with the scripture. That's our problem. We move away from the scriptures and we're using philosophy. Just read the text. They said Paul didn't talk about uh, 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 faith. Uh, well, well, look what Paul said. Go to Romans chapter 1. Right. Come on. Let me establish this before I go over to James to show you. Yeah, well, Paul said, he said, well, now Paul said Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. But notice what Paul also wrote pen in verse number 5 in Romans chapter 1. By whom? We have received, notice, grace and apostleship. Notice what Paul says, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. So Paul talked about you must have obedience to the faith. You got to obey the faith. And then Paul said, among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ and we know that we are called by the gospel all right, all right. yeah and someone may be in the audience this morning and, and sometime to remind us Romans chapter 6 I'm going to just stay in two texts see sometimes we go all looking everywhere just stay with the bible yeah, go to Romans chapter 6. We'll just stay in Romans. Then I'll go to my sign text in James. I'm going to just stay right with the letter. All right, all right. Yeah, so where can I see the gospel? The gospel is in the letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Paul said, what shall we say then? Romans chapter 6. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, or God will not allow. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? So we understand in the gospel, Christ died for sin. We died to sin. Yeah, that's the teaching. In, in obeying the gospel, we imitate what Christ did for us. Yeah, he said, now, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. So the gospel is about the death of Christ. Yeah, we are baptized into his death. Then he said, therefore, we are buried with him. Christ was buried in a tomb. We are buried in a liquid tomb. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. He died for sin. We died to sin. He was buried in a tomb. We are buried in a liquid tomb. And then he said that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should now walk in the newness of life. Christ rose up on the third day. We rise to, to live a new life. Yeah. Good preaching, sir. Yeah. It's the same automobile, but now the car has a new engine. That's what it has. You got a new engine. You got a new heart. You got a new heart. And now, whatever oil was in that car, I'm speaking metaphorically, you change the oil in the automobile. That's what you do. And what I change, the oil I use is the word of God. And if I use it, it'll flow well. I know it will. I know it will. Just use the word of God. Stop struggling with what God said and just do what the scriptures say. Yeah. Peter said God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. You want to go to heaven? God has already given it to us. And if you want to learn how to live right, God has already given it to us. The problem is man, not the word of God. Yeah. Can't be a gospel preacher unless you preach the gospel. Yeah, you should never get up and preach and don't share the gospel. How can you be a gospel preacher and all you give is a plan of salvation? Somebody ought to say amen. Yeah, tell me about the gospel. Let me know how Creed the Bible said when I was without strength. I couldn't do for myself. Christ died for the ungodly. I couldn't save myself. I couldn't do enough. But God loved me enough. He commended his, that's what he said in the Roman letter. Let me read the scriptures. Romans 5. Verse number 6. For when we were yet, Paul included himself, we were without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He said, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died yes, he did. For, us. for us. That's the gospel. That's what we got to preach. Yeah, That's the thing that changed man's life. When I really understand the love that God had for me. Yeah, that's what changed my lives. And then let's stay in Romans. Romans 10, 17 as we go to James as I get the second part of this text. And uh, in Romans 10, 17, notice what Paul established. He said, so then, so then, so then. faith cometh by yeah. hearing, yeah. and hearing by the word oh, of God. God. Uh -huh. Yeah, my faith come by what I hear, and what I hear must be the word of God. Yeah, oh, that's plain. Come on. That's it. yeah. Verse 
Now, before we get to James, let's stop off at Ephesians chapter 3. And let me establish this foundational text. Come on. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And the verse is number 4. All right, Paul wrote, whereby mm -hmm. when you read, yeah. Come on. You, you may understand yeah. Mercy. my knowledge yes, in the mystery of Christ. Yeah. The Apostle Paul shares a foundational principle, which is that reading can bring about understanding. All right, all right. That being the case, let us now read from the Word of God to get a clear understanding of this thing that we call faith in works. Well, by when you read, you might understand. The problem sometimes we ain't reading. We ain't reading. Because Paul said, understand this, when you read, you may understand, he said, my knowledge in the mystery concerning Christ. So let's go to James chapter 2. So we've established the fact Paul has said, even in the Roman letter, in Romans 1, 5, that, that one must be obedient to the faith. But in James, it is right, and we'll pick up, I give the text that I've been given I start where I was given the text in verse number 14. James said, what do it profit, my brethren? Uh, what is the benefit to the possessor? Though a man say he has faith and have not works, James asked the question, can faith save him? He said, now, let me give you an example. If a brother or sister be naked or poorly clothed and destituted, lacking daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warm and feel, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doeth it profit? That's it. That's it. Listen. Come on, Listen to yeah. This text ain't that difficult. All right. It's not that difficult. He said, now, you say to the person, uh, 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 go on your way and, and be warm and feel. However, you haven't given them anything. James says, even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone by itself. Then he said, well, yea, a man may say. See, some of us say this. Uh -huh. James said, uh -huh. thou hast faith and I have works. works. Yeah. James said, show me thy faith without works. I will show thee my faith by uh -huh. my works. Yes, it ain't that hard to understand. It ain't that hard to understand. That's Thank you, my brother. They ain't that hard to understand. James said, I'm going to show you my faith by my works. He said then in verse number 19, still in James, and stand with the text, and all we're doing is according to the scriptures. He said, thou believest there is one God. He said, thou do it well. Now understand this, James said, the devils also believe. And they tremble, they shake with fear. So it ain't just about belief because the devil believed. If all I had to do was believe, now I'm in the same category as the devil. But what wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works, he said, is dead? Then I text the question we were at. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when? When? That's the question, when? It's right there in the text. He's going to tell us when. He said, when he offered his son upon the offer. He said, seeing thou how faith wrought or works together with works. And he said, and by works was faith made perfect. Yeah, made perfect. So we ask ourselves, uh, we see what Abraham said. Go to Genesis 22. Come on, preacher. 
Because Paul said in Romans that obedience is by faith. Paul also said uh, that uh, now faith cometh by hearing, and hearing must be by the word of God. So how can we connect James chapter 2 with Romans 4? Notice in 22. And the Bible says, G, uh, God talking in verse, I'm going to start at verse 16 to give us all of this. I have a few moments left. The Bible says, and by myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing to my off and his son, and has not withheld thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And then here's the verse here. And thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now the question is why? Because thou has obeyed my voice. So then faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. God spoke to Abraham and told Abraham to offer his only begotten son. Abraham, faith was counted righteousness when Abraham obeyed the voice of God. No such thing as faith only. So we see from the text that there is no works without faith and there is no faith without works. The Bible said, I'm back in James now. He said, you see then. Well, I go verse 23. And the scriptures, James 2, 23. And the scriptures were fulfilled with said, Abraham believed God, and it was, um, was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You become his friend. Jesus said it like this here. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and do them, I liken him unto a wise man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, when are we wise? Sometimes we think we wise, and I say this here now, when we put all these alphabets behind our name. Let me drop that while I'm here. I don't have no problem with it. Yeah. Yeah, you got, and even in the lex, in, in, in lectureships now, we go, we have to have doctor in front of somebody's name or you won't put his name in there. I don't see that in the scripture. As Peter said, as my beloved brother Paul. Yeah, see, we think we wise. Let me get that text. Go to Matthew 7. Trying to keep a hold me on my time. Hold me on my time. Drop that here. I'm coming from Houston. And I ain't got no, bit, no better sense than to say what's in the scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Notice what Jesus said. When is a man wise? It's not when he put doctor in front of his name or PhD behind his name. Jesus said, therefore, in verse 24 of Matthew 7, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house on rock. When do we become wise? When we do the will of God. See, I don't need no initials in front nor behind my name. Yeah, I just want to be wise as Jesus sees it. As Jesus sees it. And in my closing, he said, you see then, back in James, how that by works is a man justified or a judge, a judge to be righteous and not by faith only. Likewise also was Rahab, the hearted, justified, notice, by works when she received the messengers and had sent them out another way. And then he closed it by saying, for as the body without the spirit is dead, even so, 
uh, uh, so faith, excuse me, let me read that back again. Thank you, my brother. Two minutes. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. In other words, they have no effect, no power to bring about a result. And so we have to, in the church of Christ, yes, sir. be wise in the eyesight of God yes, and not in the eyesight of man. Right. Well, yeah, I want the Lord to sound wise. Why? Because I'm simple enough yes, to hear what the scriptures say and do what the scriptures say do. In the church, in worship service, if we just did what we can find in the scriptures, yeah, just worship according to the scriptures and stop trying to, and in the church of Christ, stop trying to stretch scripture to fit how you and what you want to do. Yeah. My faith is based on works, what I can read and understand in the scriptures. Thank you very much. You know, there, there are going to be a lot of results from what has transpired here. And I was sitting there thinking that one of those results, I guarantee you there are going to be a whole lot more gospel meetings around Texas because all of a sudden people are, are being introduced to a whole bunch of new gospel preachers. Uh, it, it, this is unbelievable. Wow. The problem with that is that Clay, Clay got 52 sound gospel preachers preaching here. And I don't want to put an idea in his head, otherwise we have 52 meetings. <laughs> so, and, and, and believe me, he, he, if he starts to thinking about it, we didn't done it. So, uh, we, uh, before, we, before we go to our next preacher, I need to say something about my preacher. We, uh, one of the problems we have here with him is that he tires this congregation out trying to keep up with him. And, and the, the brothers have gotten together, and, and I, we say this all the time, it is far better for us to have a preacher that's on fire yeah. than one that we have to light a fire under. Yeah. And, 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 and believe me, they, they'd, have to, they'd have to lie, they'd have to put kerosene on one of these brothers to set him on fire just to catch this brother. <laughs> our, our next uh, speaker will be Brother David L. Williams. Uh, he's from Sulphur Springs. I'm not sure where Sulphur Springs is. I've heard a lot about it. I'm not sure exactly where it is. But I, I kind of think that he might be a country boy too. We've got all these country boys in here, and the country boys have been tearing it up. So, so I, I'm going to make that assumption. He is the, the son of, of Will and Claudia Williams, and he has wife, Murder Williams. Uh, he doesn't mention. Do you have any children? He's got some children. He's got, this man. This this man has eight children, and the character of a, of a man is, is is often displayed by the number and care that he has for children. And, and the guy that's got eight children, you know he's a hardworking man. And, uh, he's got a, a, an AB and a BS, and he is an, uh, an alumni of Southwestern Christian College. Brother Williams, and there's a bunch of Williams here. <laughs> Brother Williams is going to be speaking on what Bible love is and is not. I can think of a better way to end our session than to talk about love. But after a, a verse of a song, we're going to hear from Brother Williams. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Camping towards Canaan's land. I will leave this land of bondage with its earthly treasures. I'll journey to a place where there is love on every hand. I'll exchange a land of heartaches for a land of pleasure. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. Yes, every day I'm camping toward the land of Canaan. And with rapture I survey its wondrous beauties grand. Glory, hallelujah, find the land of promise, for I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land.
giving the glory and honor to God this morning. I just thank Brother Clay Williams and the leaders here uh, for allowing little me to be able to speak on this lectureship uh, and my assigned topic is what Bible love is and is not. Uh, I uh, know what Bible love is and is not because I'm a product of God's love. God has blessed me to go through a bout of prostate cancer and he's shown enough love for me to still be on this time side of life and be a warrior for him on this battlefield. Because brothers and sisters, this is a battlefield that we are on today. I, I, I just recently uh, attended uh, 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 somewhat of a, a conference and, and it's scary to me. Uh, I hadn't been able to afford the opportunity to be, I live here in Dallas, All right. but I hadn't been afforded the opportunity to be a part of some of the functions here in Dallas. Yeah. Uh -huh. But God has been so good to me. All right, and, 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 but I was, my eyes were open. I don't, I don't know where I've been, uh, Brother William, because I went to this conference and I, and I heard some stuff that I didn't think I would ever hear yeah. before. Yeah. You, when you come talking about I got to go over uh -huh. to uh, the denominational world and Find out how they are packing the pews in the church. That's not Bible love. If, if, if you're ashamed of Jesus, uh -huh, then you will do that. Is, is that all right? Lord, have mercy. I will attempt to deal with the text of uh, Revelation 3. In verses 19. Revelations 3 and verses 19. Bible love. My Bible tells me in John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only yeah. begotten son. All right, sir. That whosoever yeah. believeth in him yeah. shall not uh -huh. perish uh -huh. yes, sir. but have yeah. everlasting yeah. life. Yeah. Oh, Am I right about it? Yeah. In Revelation 3 mm -hmm. and 19, mm -hmm. he said, As many mm -hmm. as I love. Ain't that what he said? That's it. That's it. I rebuke uh -huh. and chasten. Uh -huh. Ain't that what he said? That's it. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Yeah. Yeah. What Bible love is Lord, have mercy. and is not. Mm. We may say, well, preacher, what are you talking about? What Bible love is, is the fact that God had enough love for us yes, sir. to go to the cross for us yes, sir. while we were yet yes, sir. sinners. Yes, sir. Huh? Uh -huh. We were deep in a pit of sin and while we were there in that pit, yeah. Jesus reached down in that pit yeah. and pulled us out of that pit of sin and set our feet on solid ground. And I thank God for a Jesus like that. That he saw my weaknesses. See, some of us, some of us act like we don't make any mistakes. Hmm? Some of you remind me of old brother David. He didn't realize his condition. Am I right about it? But God had to illuminate 
or open his eyes as to what he had done. He sent the prophet Nathan in 2 Samuel about uh, uh, 2 Samuel 12 and he started talking to David so David's eyes can be open as to what he had done. But see, David knew what he had done. Uh huh. Before Nathan had to come to him. Huh? He knew what he had done in 2 Samuel 11. He knew that he was supposed to be out to war, Brother, Brother William. He knew he was supposed to be there. Huh? But here he was, up on the rooftop. Uh huh. Looking out. Looking at that eye candy. And see, some of us, we got to realize you got to stop looking at the eye candy. We get caught up. Uh huh. And looking at that eye candy. That's what David did. But when Nathan came to David in 2 Samuel 12, he said, he told David about a man who had a ewe lamb that was like his daughter and, 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 and he said this his master had decided to take this man you lamb and, and serve it to his guests instead of getting some of his lamb and serve it to his guests and, and when David's eyes was open David said I have sinned see some of us some of us don't want to admit that we sin. Yes, right. That's right. But God's word all right, lets us know that all have sinned yeah. and come short of God's glory. Yeah. Yeah. And am I right about it? Right. Right. Self-love hmm. seeks to use God. True love yeah. seeks to please God. Right. In this particular text, the uh, uh, writer loosely quotes Proverbs 3 and 12. Say, so for whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as the father, the son, in whom he delighted. In Hebrews 12 and verse 6, he said, for whom the Lord loveth, he chastened. See, one thing you got to understand, if you are a child of God, God is going to chasten you or discipline you or reprimand you. But first and foremost, you got to be a child of God. Some of us, we want to put on airs as if we are children of God. We want to do things that are contrary to God's will and his way when it come down to the doctrine. But I go back in my memory where uh, in Acts 2 and about verses 42 he said and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and, and breaking bread and in prayer and this is the Bible law that I know and also in Acts 2 and 40 it said you got to save yourself from this untoward and this crooked generation see I can't save you I can preach to you until I'm blue in the face but I can't save you. You got to save yourself. And because of God's love and the love he has for us. In Acts 2, 47, praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. See, when God adds you to his church, no one can take you out but God. Is that all right? We find this text here uh, in dealing with our friend David who eyes were open to his sin. And, 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 but see, brothers and sisters, when you sin, see, God loves you enough. He got to chasten you. Huh? And this is going to be continuous uh, chastening. Uh, am I right about it? All right, and he told David, said, David said, I've sinned. He said, but Nathan let him know that you're not going to die, David. But I want to let you know something, David. Uh -huh. That your, the sword, uh -huh. Uh -huh, the sword is never uh -huh. going to leave your house. Yes. And David didn't understand 
what he was talking about. And if you continue on there in 2 Samuel, we'll find out what uh, Nathan was telling David. He said, the sword is not going to leave your house. Your house is in an uproar. You have done things contrary to God's will and his way. And your children are just acting up. Uh, we just had Father's Day on last Sunday. But see, we here have an example of David where he neglected to set the right example Amen. before his kids. Amen. And for all was said and done, his one his son, Amnon, fell in love with his sister Tamar, oh, and he took advantage of her. And then uh, uh, Amnon, who uh, uh, was the brother of Absalom, and Absalom, he waited two whole years. Right. Uh-huh. Two whole years before he decided to set a plan in place so he could kill Amnon. Because of his sister Tamar. Two whole years. Uh -huh. And see some of us. Some of us. Some of us. See when we talk about Bible love. See some of us carry animosity toward one another. Not for two years, but many years. Some of us. Some of us leave here. We leave here. And don't get things straight with your brother or sister in Christ. Because see, some of us are related to one another by blood twice. This is the Bible love that we're talking about is that you as a child of God, you have a responsibility toward one another. Yes, that's right. That's right. In this text, right. uh, Revelation 3 and 19, mm -hmm. the word is somewhat altered here for love. It, it, it says that uh, he loved us enough to chasten us. But this love here in this text is somewhat altered. Instead of being agapeon, it's, it's uh, phileon, which is a different kind of love. And this kind of love that we're talking about here is the kind of love that is not going to resort to any kind of hate. And see, it's a shame when you hear brothers and sisters in Christ say that they hate one another. But this kind of love, this Bible love we're talking about in this text here, is the kind of love that he's, God is going to show for us no matter what we do. Because see, sometimes we, are con we do contrary to God's will in his way. That's right. But see, if we have enough love for God, and if we study God's word like we're supposed to study God's word, Paul writing to his son in the Gospel of Timothy, in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, he says, stand to show yourself approved, or approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, but rightly divide in the word of truth. I want to be approved and proved by God according to his word. I love the word of God enough that I want to be proved and approved by God. See, brothers, it's so much going on in the brotherhood today. When, when I hear young preachers, young preachers saying that I got to trick you into the church. Huh? And if I trick you in, I'm going to have to keep on tricking you to keep you in. Yeah. Huh? But if you just do it the whole way, yeah. huh? The Bible away. Yeah. Huh? I won't have to trick you in. Yeah. If you obey from the heart that form of doctrine, yeah. huh? This is the Bible law that I'm talking about. Yeah. Just obey God rather than man. Yeah. See, I. I'm cognizant of the fact of Bible history. If one of our pioneer preachers were able to baptize over 40,000 people with the same word of God, then why should I want to change it? Huh? Over 40,000 people they baptized, and here I want to go since I got a little education and I got a few letters in front of my name. I want to change the word of God. Don't you see? Don't you see? Yes, sir. Oh, you ought to say that. Come on, Yes, sir. And some of us old preachers, 
we trying to emulate the young preacher now. I, I believe in telling it just like it is. The truth is the truth. My Bible tells me the truth, you should know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So I have to tell it just like it is. If you're not doing what God will have you to do, then I'm going to pray for you that you change your way. Because if you're going to make heaven your home, you've got to obey that form of doctrine. Am I right about it? Sometimes we get somewhat carried away with how we do things. I, I heard one brother in this particular meeting say, well, you know, uh, you older uh, song leaders, you know, we, we like to hear those upbeat songs and things. And, and I'm saying, well, what about that, that old time gospel? You know, I, I don't see things changing around here. You know, why can't we just sing the old time gospel? Yeah. Uh-huh. But I know who, who they want to emulate. Uh-huh. They want to emulate Kirk Franklin and his contemporary singing. Why can't, why, would we, why can't we just sing like we were singing what the song that brought us here? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's all. We don't have to go to using these mics to emulate a musical instrument all of this boom boom in the church and serving God and three and four and five song leaders. I'm preaching Bible too. Lord have mercy. The kind of love that we should have for one another. In John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciple if you have love one for the other. Am I right about it? Romans 12 and 10 says, be kindly affectionate and to one another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. And in 1 Corinthians 16, 14, he said, all things be done with charity. Is that all right? Yeah. Hebrews 13 and 1 said, let brotherly love continue. Is that all right? See, if we are going to do better in the brotherhood, we're going to have to let brotherly love continue. See, we can't love one another and decide that you got to do what I say do and not what God say do. See, that's what the problem is. Huh? We trying to put words in God's mouth. Huh? Yeah, that's it. That's it. But I remember reading in the Bible say in John 1 and 1 say, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So if it started with God, why should I want to add to it? See, all of this praise dancing and praise singing. And you're probably saying, well, I, I, I've never heard of that being in the church of Christ. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. You got some that even uh, allowing sisters to get in the pulpit. Well, yeah, you're right. In the church of Christ. You're right, preacher. You're right. Come on, preacher. But by what authority? All right. What authority? God has never given them that authority. No, sir. No, sir. We're talking about Bible love. Yes, sir. All right. Bible. And Bible love. Bible love. Am I right about it? But when you start deviating, and see, some are want to say, well, well, brother, uh, you, you, you kind of antiquated. And, and <laughs> well, free time, free time. It's, a, it's a new day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we got to do some new things oh, no. in order to keep members of the church of Christ in the, in, in the body. Lord, it's not a new day. Yeah. It's the same day. Yeah. All you got to do is hold on to God's word. Yeah. 
And God's word will prove itself. Yes, sir. Yes, it will. You're right, sir. So why is it that we tend to want to change the way God would have it to be? Some of us, some of us get caught up with this new era. It's no saving power in the thought process of this new era. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we, we see, we're, we're fighting a war. Yes. Right, that's it. That's it. See, uh, 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 well, it's against principalities and powers, but we're fighting a war right inside yes. the body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and all the way that we're going to be able to fight this warfare, Brother Williams, yes, is that we got to study God's word. Yes. Yeah. Because, see, I can come in here and, 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 you know, be able to talk that sweet talk to you, huh? And talk that smooth talk to you and make you feel good. And then when you, and like, like one of the brothers was saying, well, when you leave here, well, what did he preach about? I don't know what he preached about, but it was good. How can it be good? It was wife and was not based on God's word. How can it be good? Lord, have mercy. 1 John 4, 20 says, if a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath seen? And in verse 2, it says, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, loveth brother also. Now, you know, in this 21st century, we see... A church building just about on every corner. All right. You're right. Huh? You're right. God does not advocate division. Come on. Man. Right. Man. Hmm? Teach us right, sir. Right. He does not advocate division. Yes, sir. But we tend, we tend to think yeah. that it's all right uh-huh. that we cause confusion Lord, in the church. Lord, Am I right about it? That's right. First Corinthians six and one said. There are any of you having a matter against another. Go to the law before an unjust and not be before the saints. So you got brothers and sisters taking one another to the law. This is what Bible love is not. If you love your brother or sister in Christ, then you are going to go before the saints. Huh? You're not going to go before an unjust judge to deal with your brother and sister in Christ because they are not the one who's going to judge you according to the scripture. Romans 16, 17 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and of offenses of contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned avoid them. See, See, in the church of Christ, we're getting somewhat lost of days ago about discipline in the church. See, if God said he's going to chasten us in Revelation 3.19, yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. then there got to be discipline in the church. Yes, sir. But see, when people have not learned how to be led, uh-huh. they don't understand what leadership in the church is all about. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. Ella. It's supposed to be worthy of double honor. Huh? That's it. That's but if you haven't been taught mm-hmm. how you are supposed to respond yeah. to discipline of an elder, yes, huh? You will decide, well, I'm a man just like you, man. No ma'am and no sir. Right. This brother is an elder of your church and he's worthy of double honor. You are not to have that type of attitude towards your elder. In the church, I had one elder to tell me that, well, brother, when you know some of these members won't even speak to me. That's not the kind of love you're supposed to have. That's not Bible love, huh? And see, on many occasions, see, it having a plurality of elders. Now, quite naturally, you gotta uh, watch your Satan. See, old Satan loves to divide and conquer. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. He'll go to one L and say, well, you know, I don't like this L over here. Well, uh-huh. Well. Uh, because he hard on me. Uh-huh. 
And he probably need to be hard on you. Because you are probably a child of Belial. And so he need to be hard on you. But then you want, want this elder that's, you know, uh, overly compassionate. But he still got to look out for your soul. Come on, all right, all right, that's it. Come on. Am I right about it? That's it. That's it. Help us do that. Help us. Yeah. It's a it's sad commentary that uh, we have these things going on in the Church of Christ. And Romans sixteen and eighteen said, "For they of such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple." See, this is not what Bible love is. That all you want to do is have your way. You want to tell people what you want them to do and not what God wants them to do. But as a child of God, you should be concerned about not only your soul, but the souls that hear you. See, as a teacher and a preacher, we are going to be chastened by God. We're going to be held accountable yeah, yeah. Uh, more difficult than you are if you're not a teacher or preacher. Yeah, yeah. And see, when we're teaching God or preaching God's word, we got to be on point. We got to teach sound doctrine. And this is what is going on in the city of Dallas. Sound doctrine is not being taught all over the place. As brother mentioned a few moments ago, that so many times preacher get up here and maybe quote one text well, and the rest of the time he philosophizes, oh, yeah, yeah. telling you what you want to hear. Oh, but yeah. brothers and sisters, if I can't say something yeah. to convict you in your sin, I have not fulfilled my responsibility yeah, as a preacher of God's word. That's it. That's it, I'm only a servant. That's it. That's it. No, uh -huh. no, 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 no one Lord have mercy. but God's servant. Yes, All right, that's it. I'm not no big eye. Come on. All right. yeah. No, I'm a little you. Yes, All I am yes, is God's servant. Yes, and if we're going to show Bible love, yeah, yeah. then we got to have the kind of love for one another yes, yeah. that hate would never creep in. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's this is what the text in Revelation 3.19 right. because Jesus loves us enough that when we get out of line, right. he has to chasten yes, us. That's it. Huh? That's he had to discipline us. That's and see, there are times in the congregation that the elders got to chasten you. Well, uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right? Uh -huh. But he's not doing it out of spite. No. He's doing it out of love. Yeah. Because he don't want to see Satan take you away from Jesus. And Oh, Satan is a busy boy. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, Satan, he loves yes. you when you do the things that he wants you to do. Yes, sir, yes, sir, say that, say that, say that. Thank you. I appreciate your, your attentive patience with, with little old me. I just appreciate you so very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay.